Hi and welcome back to Finders Beepers History Seekers. So it is one o'clock in the morning. I did definitely want to go to sleep before now, but I haven't. So I'm all sorted. I've got everything ready to go. My alarm's on for half past eight in the morning. So I'm going to get some sleep and then we're going to get off. I promise you, I'm going to try and record as much as I can for you and show you behind the scenes a little bit better than I did last time. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. Right, I'm running a little bit late already. It's literally 10 past nine. My flight is just after one o'clock. I've got to get to Liverpool. I've also got to walk a couple of miles because I'm being cheap and parking my car like two miles away from the airport. So he's banging it down as well. I was hoping it was going to be all right. So yeah, I'm off. I'm going to get on the road, get gone, get some diesel in, and then I will see you at Liverpool airport. Right, so I'm being tight, there's the car. And rather than parking and paying 50 quid for parking, I'm walking two miles to the airport to get on one of these. Although, that looks like a private jet, so I don't think I'm getting on that. So yeah, I'm heading off now. I'm in a, I don't even know where I am. It's a nice little village to be fair, but it's quite busy. So I'm heading off in this direction where that plane's going. So I will see you when I get up to the airport, unless I see something nice on the way there. That's quite pretty, isn't it? I didn't expect any sort of thatched cottages near Liverpool, if I'm being honest, but it's windy and cold. Apparently it's gonna be really nice weather tomorrow, but today it is not. Right, so the airport is literally just over that fence. I'm less than a mile away now. However, I've just got a very nice French email. I don't know why Ryanair seems to send me emails in French every single time. I, I, I've never been French, but the flight has been delayed. So it was supposed to take off at 1.45. We're now going at 3.35, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. I'm not gonna lie, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'll just charge my phones in the airport, maybe get some food, do a live stream, something like that. But it's, it's a pain because I've got limited time as it is. So this is this is not gonna help. Anyway, I'll see you inside the airport. Right, finally, we're getting on the plane after a two hour delay. Hopefully he's gonna fly pretty quick today because I need to get there as soon as possible. I need to get some explorers at me quickly. Right, I'm on the plane. I'm gonna go because I don't want to annoy anyone. So finally, Finders Beepers making to Ireland and it's very windy and very noisy so I'm going to get inside and uh, get through everything I need to get through and go and get that car and let's get out of here as quick as we can. Right so I've been searching around for zone 18 for the last, oh look it says zone 18 on here. This is where I need to be, zone 18. So I head up here and there's a zone 17 and a zone 16, but no bleeding 18. I'm having a right nightmare. I don't know whether it's in that car park over there, but look, I'll show you. Follow the signs for 18, and it says 16 there, 17 that way, 16 that way. Where the hell is zone 18? It's like it doesn't exist. I don't know whether it's over there or where the hell it is but it makes no sense at all so i'm gonna have to try and work this out oh wait 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 zone 18 it's right where we are it's literally right where we are just here somewhere although i don't there's no signs to say it's there now i've got to say that is the first time i've ever seen a church right in the middle of an airport but I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's because it's Ryanair pilots. So that's probably why, like, you've got to go in there and like, well, do all this before, <laughs> before you get on the plane. Right, I'm waiting for my man to come and pick me up in a van. A man in a van to come and take me to my car. It's actually really nice weather. It's windy though, you're about to hear it on the, on the camera, but it, it's not bad, it's not bad. If it stays like this, I'll be happy. I just don't want it to absolutely piss it down for the weekend. Right, see you when I get my car. 
Right, so I've got my car all sorted. I just need now to go and get a blanket to sleep under tonight in the car because yes, it's a nice little car and yes, it'll probably stay quite warm in there. The problem is, the problem is I couldn't bring a blanket with me. Oh God, it's been pain display, but I'm not paying. I'm just running away and going and getting a blanket. If I've got a clamp when I come back, I'm gonna be in big, big trouble. But literally going to Primark, which is not called Primark here, it's called Pennies, and it's just across the road. So I'm running in, running out, and we should be sorted. So hopefully I don't get towed away in the meantime. Yeah, so here we go, Pennies. just exactly the same as Primark but literally all I want is one of these throw things that are over here they're gonna be about 25 quid I think but it's better than being cold <laughs> now I know what you're gonna say it is a beautiful color I've got a nice pink one only because it was the only one that was 18 euros the cheapest I could find but it's massive to be fair so it's perfect right let's get, get in this and get out of here as quick as we can don't want that ticket. Now it is a massive queue, but luckily they go down really fast in this place. So we will get out of here quite quick, but I don't think that's bad. It's quite a good size. There was a gray one, but the problem was it was all untied and I couldn't be bothered with it. So we got the pink one. Right, sorted, out of here, quickly. Right, everything, it's weird this place. Cause that is definitely Poundland, but it's called Deals. And Penny's is Primark. It's like they're all the same shops, just with different names. Really weird. I think, isn't Penny's in America as well? I have a feeling there's Penny's in America. But I don't know if it's something totally different. Anyway, let's get back to that car park, <laughs> quick. Right, so I'm in a place called Swords, which is quite a strange name for a place. But as I drove in here, just down this road, I saw what looked like a little abandoned house. So I'm gonna go and check that out. If it is worth doing, it'll probably only be a midweek video, I think, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna head down and see what I can see. Just don't know what it's like round here though. I don't know whether I'm likely to be spotted or what. So I'm just gonna jump in and see what I can find out about the place. But the traffic's terrible. I've literally driven maybe a couple of miles, no more than that, and every two seconds I'm stopping because of the traffic. Now, I don't know if this, why are they going into, God, look at this. I wanna go, I'm going straight up. Is it because they're all going right? Yeah, they're all going right. So we're okay, we can get out of here. Right, I'll see you up at that house. Right, so I've left the car there. I don't think it's very promising, to be fair. Nah. It's ruined, absolutely ruined. I will have a quick look round the back, just in case. Because you never know what's hiding away in these places. Oh dear, oh dearie dear. Yeah, <laughs> not a great deal. I'm not making my way in, I don't think. Oh, there might be something worth seeing. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. No, it's definitely not even worth jumping in because it's a bungalow as well, so I can literally see everything that's in here. There's, oh, that big chest good though, isn't it? Look at that. That's really good. I wonder if that door's open. Might be worth looking in there. No, that door's not open. And the thing is, there's glass everywhere. And for the sake of that one chest and a couple of things down there, I'm not... I'm not making the effort of getting in. It's not worth risking it. Oh God. <laughs> and that's why, because I'm accident prone. But as you can see, like looking at the rest of the place, it's, it's dead. It's not worth it at all. I haven't looked in this other window up here. But I think we're in a similar sort of situation. Oh, there is some stuff in here. But that's it. That is literally it, look. Oh, look at that. That's good, isn't it? I think we're gonna see a lot of 
um, sort of Christian Catholic kind of effigies and things. Oh, it's a shame now. There is a few bits in there that look quite good, but I'm reckoning most of the stuff has been taken out already or just burnt and destroyed. Right, let's get out of here because we've got some big locations to do. But I just wanted to make sure I show you any little bits like this that I try and get in. I just want to show you. I want to sort of make it worth while actually jumping over that fence because then I can tell you about it. Right, I'm going. Right, the sun is on its way down. I really would have liked to see the sunset somewhere really nice, but I literally had to watch it on a motorway, which wasn't the, the best, to be fair. I've been having a proper laugh, singing along to Uptown, <laughs> Uptown Girl and a bit of Cher as well. Something seriously wrong with me. I'm by myself and I'm having to keep myself entertained. I've not even got Bear to talk to. Like normally on the road trips when it's just me and Bear, I'll have a proper conversation with him, but I've got nobody to talk to, so I'm just slowly going insane. At least we've moved away from the city and it's more sort of countryside round here. I've got, let's have a look, seven, oh god, you can't see that, 72 miles to go. Um, and I should be there in about an hour and eight minutes, so it's not too bad. That's the first explorer of the night, and I think it's going to be a big one as well. Right, so I've just been through the first of my road tolls. Now, I think there's going to be quite a lot, which is a bit of a pain. Like, this, this is why I've said I'm hardly going to eat while I'm here, because I haven't got enough money to either drive or eat. So I think eating might be out of the way. I, I, we'll see. We'll see, because there may be some more money going to drop in. So, it uh, depends, it depends. If it does, then we'll be eating. If, if not, then, then it'll just be driving and sleeping and driving and sleeping. But we'll see. And I know there's going to be loads of you going, but you must eat, Matthew, you must eat. By the way, don't call me Matthew. Only Rachel, Leah, my dad and my mum can call me Matthew. Nobody else. But, yeah, I, I'll be fine. Regardless, I'll be fine. Don't worry. Right, so I have stopped in a place called Athlone. So you can see where I've come from, Dublin. I've made my way halfway over the country already. Um, I am heading a little bit further after this. I'm going to finish up my day at Gal... I can't get this to focus at all. Galway, at this side, that's where I'm going to finish my day. But for now, I'm halfway across. And I'm going to go and get some food. Now, the only problem with coming to places like this where I've never been before and I know nothing about is I don't know the best places to go to go and get food and get other stuff. Now this is like a, a supermarket. I might get some snacks for in the car later on. Should I go there first though? Yeah, I probably should go in there first. How do I get in? I feel like that's the out. Is this the in? Yeah getting up here so i'm gonna get some stuff for the car go and bang that in the car quickly and then go and find something to eat get some tea right, i'm confused i thought i'd just come to, to ireland what the hell are these they do not sell things like this in england what the hell is that apparently it's a gourd that just looks like some dodgy sex toy to me that is weird right so i thought right i'll go for the the chocolate muffins they're nice and easy to eat and then I saw, <laughs> I saw this massive coffee cake and I thought, right, I'm having that. I don't care, I'm getting that instead. Oh, smoked salmon. I do like a bit of smoked salmon. Should I get, no, it'll stink. Coffee cake will do. Get some apple juice. We're away, we sorted. Oh, there's so many nice things. Just want to get them, but I need to get out of here. Go and get some food for tonight because otherwise I'm just gonna want to eat everything in here. The thing is, I swear they've got crisps and stuff that you can't get in the, the UK anymore. I remember having them when I was younger and you can't get them anywhere. And also, as well as that, the sweets. The sweets are so much better than they are. There's so many more. Definitely, definitely, definitely better in these shops than at home. Right, anyway, 
I've got like a heart attack in, in three items here. So let's go and get them. Right, this is how stupid I am. So I've got my stuff and I've literally spent the last five minutes wandering around this car park looking for my car. I'm in this car, this is not my car. <laughs> so I've been looking for an Audi and obviously I'm not in an Audi. So I'm gonna bang this stuff in here and we'll go and get some tea. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I keep going past pub after pub with Guinness signs outside and I really wanna go in, but I just haven't got time. I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow, I think. Because it's tempting, it's so tempting. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on, carry on down here and try and get something to eat. I just, I don't wanna, oh. Learn a driver just almost like killed herself. But yeah, I don't. I don't want to be going in places like this and then getting a taste for it and end up not doing anything because I know what I'm like. Not now that sounds like I'm an alcoholic and I'm not an alcoholic at all. But what I mean is I get very sidetracked with stuff, like really sidetracked with stuff. And I don't want to get myself in that position. Now Ireland are playing tonight as well. I think. So, look, I'd end up in there, the pink piano bar. That sounds a bit weird as well. But I can smell food. So I need to head to where there is something good. You know what? It doesn't have to be something good. It just needs to be something. So let's go and find some food. Now this place might be absolutely brilliant or it might be a total shithole. But at this moment, it's where we're going. Because I, I can't bother can't bother to keep looking so we're getting in here Danny's in Athlone and see what I can get right so I've come back out again I didn't <laughs> I'm not a picky eater at all but when I walked in there was people eating in there and the food looked horrendous <laughs> like really bad and I am not a picky eater at all I will eat you know I'm not I eat some right shy so for me to say it looked a bit ropes it looked ropes. So let's keep looking. Now the problem is a lot of these places are either daytime food places that are only open in the day, which is a bit of a pain, or the sit down restaurants, which I have not got the time for at the moment. I really, really haven't. I would love to go and get a Chinese or an Indian or French or anything to be fair I would happily sit down and eat any of those just haven't got time but I can't find any takeaways and I just keep walking past more and more bars and I just want to go in like you get it in your head you're going to Ireland you definitely want to go somewhere where you can have a pint of Guinness or a whiskey or whatever there's more down here I swear I've just searched takeaways and it said there was loads down here and literally I've walked past two. So I might go back to the first one I saw before I saw Scabby Danny's. So <laughs> I don't want any of Scabby Danny's at all. So I'm just gonna have a look down here and see what I can see. And then if not, I'll carry on back to where I was. See look, there's loads of places like this that are just really enticing. 1859 that place. And it's absolutely rammed so you know it's going to be good although it's not looking like there's very much down here i am i'm gonna to have to head back where i was i think head back where i was and try and get some food up there right so this is the place and apparently this place is pretty good as well i've just been looking at the reviews so we'll get fish and chips i think from here and head back to the car right so we've got food eventually although I was very disappointed because they don't do mushy peas. I don't know if it's an Irish thing because they didn't up the road either. So I've got curry, which fish chip and chips and curry is just a bit weird, I think. I'll eat it, I don't care. I needed some sort of moisture to go with it. So anyway, I'm gonna crack on with that and then we're off to the next location. And when I say the next location, I mean the first location because I haven't done any yet and I need to crack on and get on with it really. But I'm starving. Anyway. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is the weirdest packaging for fish and chips I've ever seen. I, that should, looks like it should be a hash brown from McDonald's. It's me fish and me chips are in the longest, thinnest thing I've ever seen in my life. They look good though. And fish definitely looks good. Anyway, I'm not gonna show you me eating it. I'm just gonna eat it. Right, food done. I, I say food done. I've, that's the chips I've left. That 
is by far the worst fish and chips I've ever, ever had. I've decided while I'm here, I'm gonna rate things, rate my food, rate the meals I have. So for the chips, we're going for a, a one out of 10, like not even one, a non out of 10. Then we're gonna go for a, for the fish, it was all right. No, it wasn't, a two out of 10. And then finally, the curry sauce gets a strong eight. It was a nice curry sauce, but that gives it overall as a meal, I'm talking three. Three would not go there ever again. Awful, awful. Anyway, need to get off and explore instead of giving out marks for food. Just need to find a bin for these chips now. And I'm gonna go and buy some baby wipes as well because I feel that this is gonna come back out the other way. Right, so stopped at the petrol station. 77 euros, that's like 66 quid, so 66 pounds. I am literally five minutes away now from where I need to be. When they gave me the car, there was hardly any fuel in it. So I've literally just had to fill it up and hopefully that'll last a while, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna find the location now and let's get exploring, finally. Now the place I'm going, is behind those gates however i have also been told that this place here is accessible but only the underground bit so i'm going to try this place first and then that afterwards now it's definitely a little bit later than i wanted it to be it's half past nine i'm going to sort my bag out and get exploring straight away i don't really know why i've done this I sort of sat up here now, trying to get round that corner. But this, I can't even tell where the wall is, so I'm going to end up falling on my arse, I think. Like, literally, right up here. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what's best to do now. Because I did try and get over that fence, but I've got shit arm strength. I've got good leg strength. So I might just get back down again. Right, I think that's a fail. I've tried so hard. I don't think, I don't think you want to see how hard I've tried. I've worked so hard that I've put myself in so much danger. So much danger. For a start, I've been walking along this wall. That's nothing in comparison to where I ended up. Now, I've been to these buildings. You can't get in them. I've been all the way around the building. You can't get in. The bit I need to get into, I'll show you where where it is in a minute but i'll also show you where i've just been now i know for a fact you're going to be angry with me i went up there which is fine then i went on the top of that there which well that's the top of the signpost it's well above that it's a good what 20 foot 15 20 foot and then i went along the edge of that but then i couldn't get past this bush and behind here is a big fence so you can get into this side and walk and then there's a big fence there that you can't get past and what i was trying to do was get behind this and climb over this white fence here now further up here it is a little bit easier to get over this white fence but i've got no upper body strength i never have i've got good leg strength but no upper body strength and that is something that i do generally need andy for but i'll show you what i was trying to get to just a minute now it's this place i know you can't see it properly and you probably can't hear me either now but it's a massive asylum and it is fantastic i'll see if i can show you a different bit in a minute see if we can see through these gates up here i'm literally parked there like i said there is another abandoned building behind there but apparently it's wrecked and it's a mess there's no point going in it so i'll have a look through here can we see through here yeah, sort of. So it's a bit like Denby Asylum in Wales, but kind of better these days. There's more stuff in it, but they've really blocked it up. Really, really like this. There's no way of getting through the front, front gates. Definitely, definitely no way. The only other way was round the back through a window and they've all been boarded up. So the only other way is over this fence. And this fence, just to show you, it's up there so it's not easy like even though it does get a little bit lower there and you can stand on this getting over that fence is, is a nightmare it is for me anyway i'm no good with my arms 
I'm good with my legs, but not my arms. Not happy. Not happy at all. This better not be how it's going to be because I do not like failing at all. And it'll bug me now, this, for like forever. And I'll need to come back at some point and come on the ferry and bring my ladders and get over there because I, I, I can't deal with it. I hate it. Right, on to the next. Be positive, Matthew. Be positive. What time? I don't even know what time it is. It's just started banging it down with rain as well. So climbing over that fence is just not sensible. It's 11 o'clock at night. Nobody would find me if I fell. There's nobody about really, like walking about now. So nobody would know. So I'm being good. I'm being sensible. I'm doing what you've asked me to do. If Andy had been here, we would have got in. And people are going to be like, well, Andy needs to come back. I know he does. Like, what I can do about it? So... Yeah, it is what it is. I can't get in. I think, actually, I think Andy would have said, no, we're not even attempting this. We're not doing it. He wouldn't have let me climb up on that wall like I just did then. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's for a reason. Right, on to the next. Hi, and welcome back to a scared person. Finders, beepers, history seekers on his way to a location. I've got to walk. Now, the thing is, I've already started walking. And I'm walking through a graveyard and it is a spooky graveyard. It, now, it is quite close. I am close to the road. But I've got to go across this graveyard and through loads of fields to get to where I need to be. But I just wanted to show you this place as I set off through. Right, look at it in here. And there's little lights flickering all around the graveyard as well. Look at this. But they're all over there as well. Loads and loads and loads of them. But it's like midnight, just after midnight, I think. And I've got to make my way through this graveyard in sort of that direction over there. There's some there is houses nearby. Look, there's an house over there. There's one right next to us here. But there's like little noises. I, let me stop a minute. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like, it's almost like water dripping or water running or something. But it's a very old graveyard by the looks of things. Right, I was getting worried because there's a little light over there. And there's a bigger light over there. And then I realised, through the fog, or the darkness, is the house that we're going to. It's right in front of us. So, I'm just going to turn this torch off and make my way up. Look at this place now, before we go any further. That's security cameras. Right in front of us there. There's a loudspeaker thing on it as well. Oh, I've not been told a particular way to get in this place either. Now both those cameras are pointing in the opposite direction at the moment. But as soon as I go over that fence, they're gonna see me. So I'm in. And wow, even though this room is empty, it's not empty. Cause the ceiling is unbelievable. Look at this. But look at this. Look at the ceiling. Look at that. Wow, look at that. So I'm guessing that's, that's not even the, that's not the entrance, is it? That's windows. That's shuttered windows. That's, it's only because I saw that door in the middle, it confused me a little bit. But look at it in here. Imagine the big chandelier hanging from that down into this room. It's almost like pink, isn't it, that? Oh, I know where we are. Look at this, this is the stairs. These are those stairs in the grand entrance. Look at those arches as well. Can you hear that? There is definitely somebody in here. Yeah, amazing place. 
Absolutely amazing. Look at the work. There's a bank there. The work under there as well. I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here quick. Thanks for watching. Thank you for keeping me sane because I've been able to talk to you and I've not pulled my pants. And I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye bye. Right, I'm just heading back. Back to the car. Um, I was going to do a bit of a, a talk with you, but I can't see properly. You can't see me or I can't see anything. So I'm going to go see you back at the car. And uh, then I'm probably going to drive to Wexford. No, not Wexford. Somewhere else. I can't remember where. Right, I'm on my way back. What the friggin' hell is this? I just heard it moving. Is it a ball? No. It looks like a bloody camel. It's, it, it, it's freaking me out, I'm not gonna lie. I've just been looking up there. You can't see it on here. I took a photo of the house. You could see the house in the distance. It looked really weird. Oh yeah, look, it's a big bull. Or a cow. Can't tell from here, really. But I better get out of here before it eats me. I mean, looking at all the stars. So many stars. Let's go, anyway. Got to get back to that car, and it's just going to take forever. Right, so what time is it? 19 minutes past four in the morning. God, and I've got to be up and off and doing stuff again. This is where I'm parked at the moment. So that is my current view. There is somebody's house just here as well, next to me. But that is my view. The thing I am going to do before I go to sleep is I'm having... Oh dear, it's had a bit of a slide about. But I am having some of this coffee cake because I've been thinking about it all the time I've been exploring. So having a slice of that, having a drink of the apple juice, which is down there somewhere, and then it's sleep time for me. Good morning. I'm sleepy. My mouth feels like it's been open all night. It's very dry and horrid. It feels very cold. I just looked, it's nine o'clock. I went to sleep about half past four, so I've not had very much sleep. But I'll be fine. I can't be hanging around much later than this anyway. I want to see where I am as well. Now, looking out these side windows, it looks very nice. It looks like it's going to be very sunny too, which is good. It's very good. But... It keeps being like goldfinch and little nice birds sat on the thing. Not like that. Not like dodgy little birds. I mean like tweedy tweedy birds. We're very steamed up so I can't see out the front window at all. But I just want to try and see where we are in a second. I just wonder what these people... Like there's literally an house there. I'm almost at the bottom of somebody's drive. So God knows what they're thinking. But anyway, give me a minute just to come round and we'll have a look. But I feel like I'm going to be freezing in a minute because I feel like it's going to be cold outside. That'll teach me to buy the cheapest blanket there is because it's all over me. I'm just covered in bits. Right, let's get out of the car. Have a look where we are this morning. Oh God, it is a bit nippy. My legs don't work at all. But, oh wow. Let me show you. So literally, like I said, pretty much parked on someone's drive but it's pitch black when I came, so I didn't know, but it's a little, what looks like a footpath down there, but I don't know if I'm going down because I don't want to get soaking wet because these shoes I've got on are dry and the other ones are already wet. But look across there. Look out there, look. Look 
couple of dogs just rampaging around that field. But look over there. Some very noisy birds. I don't know they're up there, look. They're up there. Noisy boys. Waking me up this morning, you. To be fair, like I said, I needed it. I needed to be getting up anyway. But this is, I think it's Galway. Is it Galway Bay? Galway Bay? I don't know. But there seems to be quite a few dogs over there, look. There's a big lurcher greyhound. And then look at that one. He's off. Nyom. But yeah, there's a few. Oh, they're sheep, not dogs, that are in that field. Look at him, he's an happy boy, isn't he? Anyway, I need to go and get some food in, mate. Otherwise, I am going to just continue to be freezing for the rest of the day. And I want to just go back to sleep. And I am actually shaking because I'm that cold. But we'll be fine. We'll sort ourselves out. I just need to get some food. I need to brush my teeth because my mouth tastes like dirt. Absolute dirt this morning. As I was about to reverse the car out, I didn't even realise, look how close to the water we were last night. These people have got an amazing place. Literally walk straight out of their house to the sea. So lovely. Anyway, let's get out of here. Right, we've parked the little beast in the docks. So we're next to all the big like tugboats and things like that. There's people fishing down here. Um, I don't know if it's pretty or not. I don't think it really is because docks generally aren't. Like harbours are, but docks are just a bit, a bit grim. But saying that, some of the, some of these buildings up here, I bet it's quite nice to live in. To be fair. Anyway, breakfast. Need to get some breakfast. I'm quite sure why there's some fish just flapping about on here. To be fair, I'm guessing he's. I don't even know why he's done that. What a weird man. There's fish on there. Very weird. I was genuinely tempted to go and pick them up and throw them in then. Because that's a bit cruel, isn't it? Like, I'm all down for fishing. Not that I'm a big fisherman myself. But I don't really like the idea of just leaving them there to flap about. Not really great, is it? It's like drowning someone, but opposite. Anyway, can't do anything now. I have no idea how to get out of where I am. Oh, there we go. Right, we'll go and get some food. I keep saying this. That's where half of the, the videos I make are driving to somewhere or going to get some food. So, I'm sorry. I do apologise that you have to come with me to get food, but I just thought you'd want to see. I'd want to see things. Also, I need to go get some toothpaste and a bottle of water because my mouth tastes like arse. <laughs> it proper does. And I've got a toothbrush in the car but I've got no nothing to brush it with. So I'm gonna go and get some toothpaste. Right, so we're in the right place, I think, now, for food and shops and stuff. You've got all your generic American ag uh, magnets. That's where all the Americans will be going to buy all their woolen jumpers and things like that from Ireland. And then I think we need to be on this street up here. I'm sure this is Key Street, which is what I'm looking for. Oh, it, it looked so pretty on the photos. And there has to be some sort of like roadworks and stuff going off when I come. But I think this is the, the place I need to be to be getting some food and something to set me off for the day. Anyway, we'll have a look a bit further up where it looks like it's potentially a bit prettier. This is more like it. No, no big roadworks going on. It's very, very pretty, I'm not gonna lie. It reminds me of somewhere, but I don't know where. I've gotta find somewhere good for breakfast that I am not sitting outside though today. Normally, I would sit outside, but I am so cold. It has dropped so cold today, like really, really cold. Anyway, let's see what I can find. Right, I was going to carry on further up there because there seems to be some sort of live music going off from around that corner. But the breakfast made me come in, so we're going in here. We're going in here for breakfast, I think. So yesterday I banged on about how I wasn't going to eat. 
What a lie, what a lie. Right, breakfast here, but I was supposed to be being good and I've been worse than normal, look at this. Right, so I've gone for the full on Irish with chips, obviously. I didn't order to play. come with it anyway. Some of that really nice bread, can't remember what it's called. Then I, then I got some porridge as well and a coffee. I, I am being really naughty. Anyway, copyrighted music in the background, so I literally need to just quickly show you and then get on with eating it. Right, so I smashed the breakfast. Apart from the bread, I might have that in a minute. But I wanted to make sure I had room for this and it is so nice. It is unbelievable. It looks really stodgy, but it's beautiful. It's so, so good. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that I've demolished that. Right, I said I was gonna rate food every time I had it. So, uh, I've gotta give that a, a 9.5 for the, the cup breakfast. What was missing? There was one thing missing, I can't think what it was. Oh, maybe mushrooms. But that's it, like 9.5. The porridge is a 10, a straight 10. I have never had porridge as good as that, apart from my mum's. Obviously, mum, better porridge from you. But the coffee was probably the only thing it let it down. The coffee was beautiful, but they only brought me one sugar. So we'll go for an eight on that. So overall, we've got to give it a solid nine. Solid nine, best thing I've eaten for a long time. So good. That just looks like it's sucking a bit, will it? I'm going to have to show you this. So just look at this building. What, what, is, what is that doing there? I thought it was sucking its own willy. I don't know what it's eating, it's like a frog or something, look. That's bizarre. Anyway, just gonna have a quick wander around here and then head on and have a look at some other stuff. Get out of here soon, because I wanted to go and do some more exploring. But yeah, it's getting quite busy now, to be fair. Now, one thing I definitely do like is there seems to be musicians, artists on every street corner. It's so good. I, I love how creative the Irish are, they really, really are. But this guy's literally painting, sat there, at the side of the street, and these are all the things he's done, so good. Anyway, I need to go and get some toothpaste. And a bottle of water to brush my teeth, because even though I've had that food, I still need to brush my teeth, it feels disgusting. So, but it is it's so... I do, I do love it, I do love it. The atmosphere, even on a Saturday morning, is brilliant. Right, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Now, I haven't found toothpaste, but I have found, I like, a little market, which is pretty cool, with jewellery and purses and all sorts. I can smell food as well. I, I definitely don't want any food. I am so full. But I need to find toothpaste. Do you reckon they've got a, a stall just selling Colgate? Pretty much doubt it. Right, I better head back to the car. Really, I've still not got toothpaste. I, I literally have been wandering around, watching, and listening to some of the people that are performing on the streets. It's so good. It really, really is. I'll tell you something now. Got a little bit emotional a minute ago. I st still am. Um, purely because I, I come to these places and there's certain people I want to experience them with. So when I'm here by myself, it's a bit like, as you can tell, I am quite an emotional person anyway, but it just definitely, definitely, you want to experience these places with people, but at least I get to experience them with you. Like thousands of people I've probably never met, but at least, at least you get to see them with me. But yeah, just markets everywhere, look. There's like, olives and bread and cheese and just 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 stuff just really good stuff and it's all food and like i said normally i would be like oh this is amazing but because i've just eaten so goddamn much i'm, I'm not i'm not in a position to eat any of it right anyway let's get through these crowds and head off back to the car and hopefully get some toothpaste on the way
Right, so kind of got myself a bit lost. I'm, I'm down by the river, but I don't actually know where I am. And there's some man over there talking to me. There's some other building here in a big castle -y, wall -y type thing. But I don't, I don't know where I am. This river looks like it, if you fell in it, you'd be in the sea in about 10 seconds. Look how fast this is going. Now look at that. That is, that is some current. Look at it under the bridge. I'm guessing there's been flooding or something. Because that's going so fast. So, so fast. But it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day anyway. So, I just need to find where the car is now. I have no idea. I'd, I'm going to have to try and work it out on a map. It turns out I actually wasn't very far away. It's just around this corner. These are those apartments we were looking at earlier on. That's Galway Bay out there. And uh, we are just, it's the port of Galway. We're just around this corner. Right, so I'm back round where the car is. Now, I got told about this years ago and I've forgotten all about it. This down here, so obviously this is a, a way to get on the boats, the older way, but this was put there for a reason. A lot of the time, sailors were quite superstitious and they liked to have the cross right next to where they got on the boat so they could touch the cross, cross themselves and then jump on the boat just obviously to protect them for the uh, whatever journey they were doing. But actually, even though this bit of it is really like industrial, it's actually really nice. Really like it here. Anyway, car, Matthew, job, work. Now I've decided to drive around the coast road and as I've been driving round, I've come through like a place that looks like a like holiday resort. There's loads, look, there's loads of caravans down here. It's just been raining. I've just got stuck in a bit of rain, but it seems like I'm driving out of it now. But I've just driven past somewhere that 100% is abandoned. And also, I can see somewhere else up here that 100% is abandoned. If it isn't, there's something wrong because the roof's falling in. So I'm just gonna have a quick look. I'm like, I'm not in my exploring stuff at the moment, but I just wanna have a quick look with my eyes. And if it's worth going back and getting changed, then I will. Now it's not actually just one place, it's two. There's this little one here, look, which is absolutely overgrown. I don't know how I'd even get in there. And then next to this petrol station, there's this place, which is a bit weird because it's like right behind the petrol station. Surely nobody lives in here. But there's a car outside. Surely nobody lives in here. I'm a bit worried now. What if they actually do? I don't think they do, look. I think it's a bit dead. I don't think it's worth it. We will try. Maybe have a look around the back. So that's the one I've just looked at. This is the little one that's buried. And I don't know whether you can get in it or not. <gasps> you can. Now there might be nothing in this, but it's worth sticking my head in. Oh Lord. I don't know if it's a bit too gone. It's a bit small, that's the thing, it's only a bungalow. So you've literally got this one room here, and then I think maybe one next door, and that's it. So I don't know whether it's worth me making the effort of going back and getting changed, because there's not a great deal in there either. However, this place, if this was as well, I could do this one and this one at the same time, and then it would be worth it. Right, so I've just opened the window to have a look in this one and the window is literally about to come off. So I need to put it back on again. God, I'm scared that's just gonna fall off now. But it's not worth it. So I don't think personally either of them are worth it. I have come round the back just to check because you can't base a house on one room. What's this little place? 
Another little place here. Confused by this now. Stained glass window. What is happening here? I don't really understand any of this. Oh, that's all part of the same house. Look, it's like an extension. Yeah, it's just been used as storage, I think. There's like cardboard boxes in it. I've got the wrong shoes on. Like I said, I only jumped out of the car. Come and have a quick look. And uh, it definitely wasn't oh, cobwebs in my bloody face. Yeah, it definitely wasn't worth it. But you, you never know. And it, So it is worth looking, but it's, it's not worth going in. 100%. Now there is another one I've just seen down the road. So I'm gonna quickly check that one out. And then we're getting out of here because the locations I've got are supposed to be all right for this afternoon. So I'll need to get to them as quick as I can. But look, let me just show you this. So yeah, I can get up the side. If you look behind here, there's cardboard boxes and all sorts. So it's not, I can't even really see through any of these windows because it's all weird glass. It might be good upstairs. It's a big house, you know. But we'll never know because I'm not going in. Right, I'm quite confused because this is the place that I was looking at and you can't quite see but that roof is not a roof. It's all falling off. All the tiles are falling off and there's big holes in it but yet it's an off-license and it's open. Well, oh no, it's not open, look. It's not open. It's been shut down. So, let's have a look. So obviously I'm not bothered about going around shops anyway, but it's all the other bits. At this side, there's loads, loads to that building. Can't really show you to be honest. But yeah, it needs knocking down that place. Yeah, it's, it's a big building, really big building. So anyway, like I said, sometimes worth stopping, sometimes not. Right, just got back to my car. That is not something you see every day. A chimney sweep. I don't know if it's his own house. It's up on the roof, shoving stuff down the chimney. I haven't seen anyone do that for years, since the 80s. Oh, I got some toothpaste, by the way. Right, I'm heading inland in a minute to go to these locations. But I just thought, why not pop down to the water? Look at the windsurfing and everything down here. It's like a windsurfing water sports club place i know it's not really compared to like the highlands of scotland the places i went there where it was all secluded and stuff it's it's not the same because it's a bit touristy but i just wanted to jump in here because it's the atlantic and then i've jumped in the atlantic while i've been out on my travels and i know it's going to be freezing but i could probably do with a wash anyway so I might just dip my feet in to be fair because I haven't got a towel and I can't get naked here like I do normally because <laughs> there's like children about which is which is worrying so anyway let's get in oh there's a heron there don't know if you can see it in the rocks there look just this little head sticking up it's the heron doing some fishing while they're all out on the canoes like I said, there has been, you can see the black cloud up there, there's been a bit of rain, but mostly it's been really, really nice. So, like I said, I'm just gonna get down to this point where I can dip my feet in. I can say I've been in the Atlantic and then we can move on and get out of here. And just go up here, out the way. Now, earlier on, I got a bit emotional, like you've seen because I was a bit low and lonely and feeling feeling it a little bit. However, these are the moments I kind of like being on my on my own by myself because this is really peaceful. Look at this. It's really calm, nice water. It's actually freezing to be honest, but it's lovely and clear. It's full of shells and little tiny fish, not that you'll see them, but I can see them. It's just, I can hear the road in the background up there, which is spoiling it a little bit. But, just watching them round there, like, 
windsurfing and canoeing and stuff like that and just contemplating life whilst walking out into this water it's just lovely it really is nice <laughs> Now I sort of feel like I can walk over to that like island thing over there but I'm very aware from how it is up in Scotland where I'm from that current the currents can be really really deceptive now I don't know if you see this bit of water here where it's, it's dead still and then beyond it it's a bit sort of more choppy I can see it you maybe can't it's moving really quick so even though it's only going over there and I probably to be fair there's a big chunk of sand that goes here so it's probably not going to take me anywhere anyway but I've always been really wary of things like that there was a lad um, up from my village or actually from the village next door uh, up in Scotland and basically he went out on a night out and there's a very small stretch of water like tiny stretch of water probably no bigger than this here and he thought I'm not walking 10 miles in a big loop round it, I'll go straight across it. And they literally found him about 300 miles away, washed out to sea. So ever since that happened, I've been very, very, very wary of things like that. You just, you just don't know. Now, I'm very, very wary of this big black cloud coming this way again. So I'm gonna get back in the car. I'm gonna go. I've had my time in the water. I'm very happy with it and I'm, I'm gone now. Now, as I was just walking back to the car, I noticed this. Now, I've seen stuff about this in Ireland before and up in Scotland. Bits of ribbon tied to trees. I don't know if it's to remember people or, or what it is, but I have seen it in, oh, where is it? Somewhere in Scotland I've been, there's a, there's a tree and it's absolutely covered, but I know they do it in Ireland as well. It's a bit of a weird spot, this as well. Big boulders down next to the water. But anyway, like I said, I keep saying it and then I keep getting preoccupied with other things. I've just been watching these learn to um, windsurf. That water is so shallow that they can literally stand in it and get used to it. It's really good. Anyway, let's go. Right, two things I want to look at. I keep, I keep seeing loads of what look like abandoned houses as I'm driving along this road. It's really, really busy. So I'm guessing a lot of these places have been just left. But there's this little one here. But the thing is, the hedges have been cut on it. Let's have a look. Look at this little tiny place here. I'm guessing it's joined on to somewhere else. And it's probably been used as a barn or a storage or something. But I keep seeing loads of them. Some that aren't connected to anything either. So there's a possibility. If I stop at the right one, I might get somewhere good. However, I think this one is part of a farm. Yeah, look, I'm using it as a barn. But something else, when I stopped, I noticed. I literally, I was looking at this place. I wasn't bothered about what was across the road, but I've just noticed it. And it's quite interesting, really. I don't know the full history on this. I know bits. And it's quite a, a funny one to talk about. But let me let me show you first. So bang opposite my car, I noticed this. In loving memory of Commandant TM Mannion of Berries, who gave his life for the Irish Republic, 1923, age 26, IRA. I told you, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one because it's, it's hard to tell you how I feel without people getting mad at me. So I sort of have a bit of support for the IRA. Not, this is weird, this is a horrible conversation to have. Not because I think anyone should have ever been shot, blown up, terrorist acts, none of that. None of that at all. But it's the... It's the same sort of thing as the Scottish side of things with me, but more of an extreme. Let me get back in the car. So like I said, 
bombings, shootings, all that side of things with the IRA. Awful, despicable, terrible things that should never have ever happened. However, it all started because of the English going over and, and basically kicking everybody off the land or making them work for nothing, making them feel like shite. And I hate it, I hate that. And I understand why the Irish rebelled and started to like form little things to fight back. I, it's weird, it's almost like we have double standards and I shouldn't be wearing this t-shirt around here I don't think either, but we have double standards because you think about the story of Braveheart and freedom and Scotland and all that and you think, oh that's brilliant, like fighting against it. You think of the Irish doing exactly the same and you think, oh no, terrorists. But it's the same thing in a way but it's not in another way because obviously like the the things that have been done these days it's a very different time so it's not that i'm an ira sympathizer at all at all it's more the fact that it doesn't matter where it is whether it's um the gaza strip oh god i'm getting very political i've got to be very careful uh, whether it's somewhere i don't know in former Yugoslavia and stuff like that doesn't matter where it is someone's come along and taken someone else's stuff it's not really very fair is it same I suppose with America and the native Indians it, but it was a different time so we can't really bang on about it we just need to move on past it and all be friends now and like sort things out but there's always going to be something but yeah like that 23 year old lad who's died fighting against oppression in his eyes oppression he's died like it was the uprising around the 1920s i think i think that's when the main uprising was he was fighting to get the land back so i, I, I get it i do get it but also it's it just leads to so people are horrible really aren't they why can't just everybody get on and, and just be nice to each other and not steal each other's stuff anyway politics and I'm probably going to get told off for this, to be fair. I, I want It's hard to say it in the right way and, and mean it in the right way, but I, I know what I mean. I just hope you do as well. Right, hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, part two will be coming soon. I don't know whether I'll put it the day after this or next week. Probably next week. But how weird is it that I start talking about former Yugoslavia and then a few weeks later, I'm driving around all the countries that made that up. That's really strange. But don't take all the things I said to heart. Obviously, like I said, it's I'm not saying everybody should kick off. I'm purely saying people shouldn't take people's things and then people shouldn't kill each other and stuff. We should all just be friends. That's ultimately, I think, how the world should be. But I try to stay away from politics. But when you go to places like this, it's very, very hard not to talk about stuff because it's, it's history. And that's the same thing when we talk about World War One, World War Two, further back. It's all history and it could all be looked at as, oh, that's a bit dodgy, a bit of an odd subject. But we've got to talk about it, otherwise it'll happen again and again and again. Anyway, see you in next week's video. Hi and welcome back to the second part of the Irish road trip behind the scenes. Now, I'm currently in the office getting stuff sorted ready to fly off to another country this weekend. And I probably filmed this the day before you're watching it. So I'm just editing this, doing that. Things are mental, to be fair, absolutely crazy. But when I'm on road trips, things seem to deteriorate a little bit. They start off with all the best intentions. First day, I film loads of stuff behind the scenes, getting to the airport, like what I'm doing when I get there. And then... Day two, I'm like, oh God, I just need to rush from place to place, especially on this road trip, because the second day, I couldn't get in anywhere. I kept trying to get in all these different locations and I could not get in. So I was panicking. So the bits in between got left out. So I'll pop back on in a bit and fill in the gaps because otherwise it'll just make no sense at all. So I think on this one, 
literally we start off at an explore and then another explore and then you'll get a bit more content that makes sense. Hi and welcome back to Finders Beepers History Seekers. Now, I'm about to go in here, but I've got a really weird feeling about it. I can hear a really high pitched noise inside. Like, I've got, you know, from the past, I've got really sensitive ears. Now, I can see a smashed glass door in there, the stuff thrown on the floor, but I, I just feel weird going in. <laughs> this is horrendous. I, I've never seen anything like it in my life. That is disgusting. I don't know. Oh, oh the, the smell is so bad. Even through this t-shirt. The little tiny wraps of shit. He's wiped his arse. And he's just, oh, look. Oh my God. I, oh, how has anyone lived like that? And why? Why is he doing that? Oh no. Poor man. Oh, that's awful. So at this point, I was on a bit of a downer. I'm not gonna lie. I had done one main explore, which I was pleased with. It had gone really, really well. So I was on a high waiting to go and do loads more. Then I hit a negative. I couldn't do that one. Then I watched the KSI fight and I was gutted because I really wanted him to win. Then I did another location, couldn't get in there. I'd done that little house that smelt the poo halfway through. So I'd at least got something. But I was really feeling quite down at this point. I wasn't feeling positive about the trip. I felt like I might just get one explore done and then that was it. So I went to bed. Right, so I've already done a location tonight and couldn't get in. Um, I was in a bad mood anyway because KSI lost his fight and it shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have lost it. So I was in a bad mood, then I couldn't get in there. So that put me in even more of a bad mood. Then I've come to this place and I don't think I want to get in here either. It seems pretty impregnable. I'm getting soaking train as well. And then someone's just sent, oh bloody hell, someone's just sent me a location that's 30 miles away, back from where I've just come from, which is quite frustrating. It's not their fault, it's nice of them to try and help out. Ah, I just bit my tongue. Uh, but now I'm at an asylum and it's not looking very promising at all. I'm going to try and show you, this is the second asylum I've done, I've not been able to get in, although... It's not over yet, so we'll try. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit well lit for my liking this. Seems wrong. But I think the bit I need to be in is up there. Anyway, not this bit. So, if I try I don't know whether to try and walk further around this way. Because that's got, it's lit up and everything. Although it is an old part of the building. God knows. We'll try a bit further around this way. Now one thing I will say, all the gates are open. I can hear a noise in here. I don't know if there's somebody in here. It's a person. Oh, it's a machine. It's making some bleeding racket, I know that.
fancy windows open to be fair. Making a lot of noise there. Yeah, there's a window open there, but there's no way I can get up to that. In fact, all these windows around this side are open. But I ain't got any sort of ladders. Unless there's any knocking about, because you never know. But anyway, I'll have a proper look round here. Right, and this is what you don't normally see this sort of thing. Me stood on a fridge freezer trying to fit through a window that is like three inches, which is not going to happen. So I've got to get back down again now, which is a pain in the arse. Right, so this is the place that I've tried so, so hard to get in. I've walked around, my legs are cut and I've been up on top of all sorts there is been there's been two ways to get in both were too dangerous on my own which is a shame literally my car's just parked there though nobody's come to stop me nobody's interested but i suppose if it's rock solid to get in then they don't need to do they there was one way potentially into the cellar but it would have meant like bending and breaking some metal and i weren't going to do that that's not that's not what i'm about but i probably could have done it in fact, I definitely could have done it, but at the end of the day, I don't come here to break things, I come here to explore things. So, I'm going to look around this other side of the building, and then we're going to go. Right, I'm driving to another location, so this will be my third of the night. However, it's 3.53 in the morning, and if I get in this place, even though it's quite small, potentially I could be in there a couple of hours. So, is it worth going in tonight? I just don't know if it is. I've decided I need to find somewhere to sleep. It's three minutes to four. So like I said, if I go in somewhere now and, and my eyes are shutting, it, it's, it could be dangerous. I need to be able to focus. I don't know what the place is like. I've just been sent it at three o'clock in the morning. So, I'm gonna go and find somewhere to sleep. I'm gonna be good, but I'm good because we've done one location for a Sunday video and two other videos as well. And I've only got tomorrow and the day after and I'm done. So I need to crack on and get some more, but I suppose I'm not gonna be able to do it if I'm dead, am I? So, I'm gonna find somewhere to sleep. Now, I've just found somewhere to stop, like a pull-in, because there's not many pull-ins on Irish roads. I've noticed that. It's either a gate you're blocking or someone's house. There's no, like, little pull-ins. But I noticed this place. Now, when I was driving down the road, I was looking for places that I could go. Now, look at this. So, if I go on maps and zoom in, so it doesn't look very much on there, but then if I change it, this I'm like what is this is it like a why won't you zoom in that's why is it like an army barracks what is it it doesn't appear to have roads but there's loads and loads of houses and all the houses like the ones that put this end and got the roofs on them these ones have well, wow, literally we're here, look. Right next to where they were, or where they are. So I was like, oh, shall I, shall I get through, the, climb over this wall here and go and have a look? But you know what? I'm so tired. So I'm not. But I might, I might in the morning. I might go and have a look in the morning, but I'm going to sleep now. It's quarter past four. It's zero degrees outside. I just, I just want to go to sleep, and it's nice and nice and warm in here, and it's not going to be nice and warm out there at all. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm letting you down today. I feel like I've massively let you down today. So, we'll we'll see what we can do tomorrow. Now, the next morning, I woke up and I was really positive. I thought, right, you know what? Yesterday was terrible. 
I'd had a bit of a rubbish night's sleep because I was so cold when I'd woke. No, you know what? I'd had a good night's sleep, but I'd woken up freezing. My shoulder was hurting as well. It, I think that's one of the places it started to hurt as well. I started to get a bit of back pain while I were there. So I don't know if that's what started it off. I'd pulled it maybe the day before. But anyway, so... <sighs> I don't know if I want to admit this. So, so at this point, I was desperate for a poo. And I know we talk about poo on this channel far too much. I do. And I was a bit stuck to what to do. There was, there was a house down the road. There was a house up the road. There was a big wall on one side and their gardens on the other. There was nowhere to go. There was nowhere. I could have gone and knocked on a door and asked. But I didn't. So anyway, I moan about it in the video. And then suddenly, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> that's because it came and it would come in whether I liked it or not. Luckily, I'd got some baby wipes. So shorts down and I pooed on the road. Luckily, no cars came. There'd been a woman going out for a run earlier on. If she'd come, oh my Lord, I don't know what I would have done. But I was literally, it, I had no choice. It was coming. It was coming right that second. So yeah, somewhere in Ireland there's a poo in the road and it's mine. <laughs> anyway. Morning. It's 8.41. And it's freezing. I'm so cold. I'm really cold this morning. I want to try and get an extra hour of sleep. It's 8.40. Somewhere. I'm going to try and get a little bit extra sleep. I've had a good night's sleep, but I'm cold and I'm tired. I don't even know what it looks like outside. I've been sleeping under this cover because it's been so cold. I'm going to quickly pop you out and then I'm going to try and get back to sleep. I've just put engine on to warm it up in here. So this is where I am this morning. Look at the frost on the floor. It's absolutely freezing. Absolutely freezing this morning. I don't know what it's saying. I can't even see what temperature it's saying. Is it saying on here? Oh, it says it's seven degrees, but I'm, I'm telling you now, it's freezing in here. Right, so I've fallen back to sleep, and it is 20 past 10, which is not what I wanted at all. I've wasted loads of time, although I think I needed it. I was very tired. So it's warmed right up, which is good because I was freezing. I put the engine on to warm the car up, and now the sun's come out, and it is boiling. Um... I'm just in a really random spot at the moment. I'm next to, I think I said it, did I tell you last night? Next to some houses and stuff. So probably people have been staring at me this morning. So I'm going to sort myself out. I need the toilet. My mouth also really hurts. I've got like ulcers or something or my mouth feels weird. So, right, I'll see you in a minute. Morning. Hi, and welcome back to Finders Brief for Sister Seekers. I've literally just woken up. That's where I've slept the night. And the thing is, I just parked here because it was the first place I came to. But then I've noticed this. And I thought, what is going on? How have I managed? I, like, I landed. I didn't land. I'm not in a plane. I parked here at four o'clock this morning. Didn't really pay much attention. Just went straight to sleep. But now I'm really, really like, I can't work out what's going on. So we're going to go in and we're going to have a look what's in there. Right. I couldn't get over those gates. But I'm walking up this road and this house, this house here, they're making breakfast and it smells so good. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. I properly over, overlaid. It was supposed to be like... Eight, nine o'clock I got up and it was 20 past 10. But I didn't go to sleep until four after going to do three different explores and couldn't get in any of them. It's been a bit of a nightmare to be fair. However, I've just fallen across this. So it's definitely worth having a look. And there's another place to explore a bit further up here. But the problem is, and you're not gonna wanna know this, I need a bow, really bad. So I'm hoping the whatever's in here has got a toilet. So anyway, this wall is too big. I can't get over it. Well, I probably could, but I don't want to risk it. Because if then I can't get back out, I need to find an easy way in and out, really. 
So I'll try and I'll see you when I find it. Right, so I've got myself up on a wall. I thought this was part of the same thing and I think it is. There's an house here that looks freshly built. So I have to get down off here now. Although I hope I can get back over once I've done this. Because that is always a worry, I'm not going to lie. Oh, I've got no choice now, have I? Oh. <laughs> I literally had no choice once I dropped that, did I? <laughs> oh God, this is not good. I wanted it to be nice and enjoyable and I don't know, look at the state of my legs. They just cut to shreds again as usual. But yeah, I thought it was gonna be really nice. Lovely Sunday morning walk to get into this place and it's just squelchy and horrible. Now we end up <laughs> going in a bit more at this rate. Look at big fat puddles everywhere. Definitely gonna slip. Right, what? Have, what I've found is really weird. What is going on here? This is just all a bit freaky. Right, we're down to the digger and I expected it to be like a smashed up, unused or unusable digger that's been here for ages. But if you look at the floor, it's all ridged. This has been put here in the last couple of days and just, they're still doing whatever work it is they're doing. So what plans they've got now for this site, I don't know. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Anyway, I think you have had the most comprehensive explore ever. Like you've had a bit of everything. You've had me sitting in a JCB thing, digger, getting chased away. You've had a weird ghost town, which is bizarre, which is a golf course place. And then you've had the old hall. So I'm gonna go now, cause I need to get onto the next one. Now at this point, the tiredness started to kick in. It was a mix of that and some other stuff as well. So Freddie had had a football match that morning. Um, and I always go to his football on a Sunday morning. Usually when I'm watching the live stream, I'm watching his match at the same time. So I'd missed that. And I was a bit emotional about missing it anyway, because I do like to see him play. And then I was in that house where obviously she'd been missing her family and stuff like that. That made me emotional and just being overtired as well. I think that's it. It was just a mix of everything. It just got the better of me and I got really emotional. And loads of people said they actually like to see me emotional because it makes me seem more of a real person. Not that I act like a robot normally, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I think at that point I was emotional, but you know what, that day, I've just been looking back at this footage. I didn't eat all day, all day. And somebody the other day told me that I need to stop eating as much. I'm eating too much. But actually the reason I put posts on Facebook of me eating is to show that I am actually eating because as some of our subscribers know I'll get up in the morning, I'll go exploring straight away, then I'll go somewhere else, and then I'll go somewhere else, and I don't end up eating until like tea time, and this is one of those days. I think it was maybe nine, eight, nine, ten o'clock before I ate anything that day. I had nothing all day, which is really bad. I know it's really bad, but when you're driving about, it's really hard not to. Anyway, let's get back onto the video. Hi, and welcome back to Finders Beepers History Seekers in a tiny little Irish cottage. And I'm excited about this one because I've had a look. I've walked through, I haven't looked properly, but what I've seen looks brilliant. Now I do want to start looking through drawers and looking at things properly, but a couple of things. First of all, I don't, you can't really tell. This whole thing is le leaning backwards. Yeah, this looks like them, doesn't it? That looks like, the daughter, so it's Patrick and Celine. I don't know if she was called Celine as well, the older woman. And then the husband. Oh, and there's some older photos down here as well, look, hidden away. I've always had a real sense of sadness in these places. 
when it's got so much like personal connection. But when you're on your own as well, then you're thinking about your... Oh, God. <laughs> Give me a minute. When you're thinking... <laughs> God, I can't even do it. I'm trying. When you're thinking about your own family miles away and you're missing them, <laughs> you just think about these old people and they're on their own all the time. <laughs> and they miss the people that they love. Right, I've had a really busy day and that's why I've not really spoken to you very much. I need to show you my feet in a minute because my feet are horrendous. So basically, my feet have been wet for days. I keep, every time I get in the car, I put my dry shoes on. Um, I try and dry them off as much as I can. But because I've been exploring a lot and my feet have been getting wet a lot, they just look awful. They look, some, I put them on Facebook and somebody said they look like an old man's scrotum. So that's not, it's not good really, is it? So I'm on my way now to Northern Ireland. So I've just done two explores, um, one that turned into another one, and then one that I did afterwards, both amazing to be fair. So I'm heading off and I haven't eaten today. I'm so hungry. I feel like I'm gonna fall down. My lips are chapped, like proper stinging, almost like cut chapped so I need a bit of self love later on I think I, need, no, I don't mean like that I'm not going to be sat in the car tugging it I just, mean, I just mean I need to go and get some food and have a bit of a chill out I have got another explore to do tonight but there's no rush I can do it later on I just go and have a bit of a chill and then we'll crack on and get on with that later anyway I'm going so as usual I've stopped to check out a little abandoned house at the side of the road but it gives me the opportunity to show you my feet while I'm doing it oh god Jesus right look at the state of those it's like I'm dead look at my toes I'm all wrinkly and horrible the other one's just as bad this car is filthy now god knows I'm going to take this back to the hire company but yeah but oh, I am going to show you my other one because I think this one's worse and I want to check on it. Oh. It's horrible. It's like a dead person's foot. Right, I've just checked in that building. It's absolutely, there's nothing. It's just like bits of stuff. Sun's on its way down. It's very cloudy today, but it's not cold. Oh, but it will be cold tonight. It was very cold last night. Uh, there was frost. It was all crunchy of the ground this morning when I got up. This car does my head in. Every time I get out of it, it says, check the back seat to see if there's a passenger. And it freaks me out. It's like, oh, somebody got in. But yeah, right, I'm off. And we're going to head off to Northern Ireland. Right, I just want to show you something. That is an abandoned house. It's about two minutes away from the one I've just shown you a second ago. Wait a minute. Right. I'm going to say, and I'll speed this up, I'm going to say we'll see another abandoned house in the next five minutes. Most definitely could be one, but still not counting it. sort of abandoned building. Oh, look at the old cars as well. There's a few old cars there. Just go have a quick look at that. Now you know me, I'm not really into my cars, but you can see, you see nice ones. Right, look at 
Look at these. Just sat outside. And this place is for sale, so I'm guessing nobody wants these anymore. Pretty sure somebody wants these, but that's bizarre. And then look, we've got Gaelic football or something. Gaelic football pitch over the road. Yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd have a quick look. Don't really know the rules of Gaelic football, if I'm being honest. I don't know what you have to do, whether you use your hands, your feet, your balls. God knows what you use, but anyway, I'll give you another look at these cars. Quickly as we all these cars come in. I almost just pulled out in front of a couple of cars then. So I don't think anyone's bothered about the Skoda pickup, but that's good. I don't know what it is, but it's good. And then these two, oh, and the one behind as well. I'm not getting out because I'm in a hurry, but I just wanted to show you that there's just abandoned stuff everywhere. Right, I've been driving through the countryside for seem, what seems like forever finally come to a very very small town and I don't know whether to stop here and get some food or carry on the hour and a half to Omar because that's where I'm going next Omar so I'm not sure if I should find somewhere here but it's only a very tiny place so I don't know if it's going to be any good or not I want to go and get a pint of Guinness as well at some point but I want to do that in Southern Ireland not Northern Ireland so, I don't know what to do. I might even do that tomorrow, I'm not sure. See, that's that village done. And I saw a pub and a chip shop. I don't want chips, well, I sort of do want chips. But if I can avoid having something from a chip shop, I will. I'll have it if I need to have it. Uh, but it's because my lips are so sore. Anything with salt on, it's just gonna be like <laughs> awful. Right, better be looking at the maps because it's all twisty and turny and changing directions this road. Now I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think I'm about to go into Northern Ireland. I don't know if there's going to be a sign to say that I have or what, but I've just looked on the maps and there's a little faint line which I think is the border, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if there's border crossings or anything, I don't think there is. I don't think there's like a hard border. Fingers crossed there isn't, because this car's not supposed to go to Northern Ireland. Right, I stopped at this petrol station not to get petrol, just so I didn't have a car behind me, because I wanted to make sure. Oh wait, I think that might be the border there, that brown sign. So I think I'm in Northern Ireland, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me just, uh, But that, this petrol station works in Euros, so surely this is still Southern Ireland. Oh, I didn't want a car behind me, and now this car's coming left, right, and centre. Wait for him to go. Right, surely there's got to be a sign that's like, Welcome to Northern Ireland, or Welcome to the United Kingdom. Because if there isn't, that's just a bit rubbish, isn't it, really? think there'd be something. Uh, well, yeah, we're in Northern Ireland. I genuinely expected a bit more fanfare than that, but now I'm in Northern Ireland. I've never been here before, so it's my first time to Northern Ireland. Woo! Woo! I have no idea what's going on here, but maps is bringing me this way. I've just turned off a massive road, and now I'm driving down this to go to a town. I, I don't really know what's what's happening. I don't feel like this is a proper road at all. Look at the state of this. This is so, so strange. I'm just gonna have to check maps. Okay, so it wasn't down this way when I turned right. However, it was down that first bit through the trees. So, just gonna go back up to this bit but the bit that looked 
straight on looked even worse than this road. Leading egg, one sec. So yeah, that's up to a farm. So that's not right. Although if the farm's abandoned, I might go up, but all right. We're almost back at the corner. This is fun reversing. Good job I'm not bad at reversing, isn't it? However, this is the way that we now, this isn't a road. I can't, I'm not supposed to go up here, surely. This is just a track. Apparently this comes out on another road further up though. So we're just gonna give it a go and see what happens. I'm just gonna check on maps that it's right again, one second. Apparently, according to this, this is right. I've just got to keep following it and it will bring me out on a bigger road. But I swear I am not supposed to be going down here. This is just madness. Hopefully, I'm not going to get shot. God knows what these people in this house are thinking. Why is there just a madman driving down a, road, a random road? Like a track. If I get stuck down here, I want to find whoever made Google Maps and smack the teeth in. This is why, Jesus Christ, this is why I use Apple Maps. I'm going to get stuck here, I'm telling you. Oh my God, I need a 4x4, not a Ford Fiesta. Oh, Lord. Oh, let's go up onto the bump. That's what I've always been told to do. Go on the bump in the middle. Oh, Lord, this is... This is terrible. Am I gonna get stuck down here? Am I gonna die down here? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm saying I don't know whether I should go any further. I, I don't think I can reverse back up here. I'm just gonna have to go with it. What an idiot. Why have I done this? Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Oh, it's getting worse, I swear. So I don't want to stop because then I might not get going again. Oh, bloody hell. Can you hear it all? It's just going to scratch car to bits as well. You know what, it'd be right good if I found like the best abandoned house in the world ever now down here. See, there is one here. I told you there's loads around Ireland. Loads and loads. But I'm not even gonna try. At least this looks more like a track again now. I'm still gonna, oh God. I don't wanna get grounded on that in the middle. Surely, no, it can't be, no. That get, That's just a massive lump. What do I get myself into? There's like a little tiny bit of track left to go. Like only a tiny bit. So do I risk it or do I turn around in this gate and then go all the way back up there? I'm just gonna risk it, fuck it. Do you wanna watch? It's not gonna be nice to watch. I might just meet you at the other end because then I can concentrate. I'm having to show you because, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I can see the end, I can see the end, there's the cars. Please make it, please make it, please make it. Fucking hell, fucking hell, fucking hell. Oh my God, oh my God, please make it up this little lump. Please. I've just got stuck in the mud once. Please, 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 please. Oh, it's not a lump. Thank God for that, we're off. Oh my God. To say that I was scared then is a massive understatement. I got stuck in the mud and luckily it let me reverse back out again. And then I went at an angle and managed to do it. I'm just gonna check the car. I genuinely don't think there'll be anything wrong with the car other than maybe a couple of tiny scratches. Yeah, there's nothing up with it. We're all good. But yeah, whenever you're driving at one of these, try and stay on the middle bit rather than at each side because that's how you end up getting grounded. Ah, oh, look. Just a bit of mud splatter. We're all good. Let's go. Right. <clears throat> I've just got to Omar. Now, I've got a problem. It's my own fault, but I've got a problem. So, I have got two hoodies. It's cold outside. Like, it's dropped even lower now. It's cold outside. I've got two hoodies, 
One is filthy. I mean, like, exploring, covered in dirt, awful stinks. Or, I go without a hoodie and I'll be freezing. Or, I wear my beeper army hoodie, which very much looks like a British regiment logo on the back. Now, I am in Omar, or is it? Is it Omar? Oh, Omar, Omar. Either way, there was a bomb in here back in the 80s. Um, a nail bomb went off. Uh, it was the IRA that did it. I just don't know whether it was a good idea walking around with that on. I might put it on, but put my backpack on over the top. Because it's on my back then you won't see it I am genuinely worried it's not just I'm not just doing this for like ooh, what might happen I'm genuinely quite scared my lips are killing look how red and hot they are it's like I've had Botox right I want an Indian so I'm gonna go and find a curry house I just fancy one I had one in Scotland I had one in Cornwall so I've got to carry on the tradition of one today but I want to go and sit in, I think, but I'll go put that backpack on and I should be all right. Right, so I've walked from the car. I think this is the courts. Looking at this over here, I'll show you in a second. I think it's the courts or the town hall or something. Um, it's just got a big cage around it, which made me think it was maybe the, look, this bit here. Made me think it was like a jail, or not a jail, a courthouse. But anyway, there's also, a big cathedral behind me and I'll show you properly in a minute I just need to get go and have a wee Freddie rang me I want to show you the front of this building I never had a chance and I want to go and get some food so I'm gonna go and do that and then I'll show you a bit more I'll show you around in a minute all right all right why am I saying it like you're here I'll see you in a minute <laughs> right so I realized I'd walked the wrong way anyway so I will show you this building I will go back up to the cathedral afterwards. I can't do too much sightseeing. I really wish I could, but I can't because I've got another explore to do tonight. Uh, and I don't know whether I've got one to do tomorrow as well. So it's been a busy day, a very tiring, tiring, busy day today. Um, but good, I, I needed it to be good because I'd had a, such a bad day yesterday with exploring. Today has made up for it. So I'll show you this place. Now, like I was saying, there's a big metal cage up there. And it's all caged in down here as well, down these steps and down the walkway, which makes me think it's like something to do with a court or something, like bringing the prisoners in. And look at the front of it, it's huge. That's what makes me think it's, it looks like a town hall rather than a court. But then, I don't know, there's bars on the windows, but that could just be stopping people smashing windows. I wonder if it says here. I wonder if it tells me what it is. I don't know if it does or not. No, it didn't say anything, which is not very helpful to be fair. It's a cracking building. Anyway, I'm gonna head down here because apparently the Indian's down here. I'm hoping it's open because it's, it's a Sunday night and I'm pretty sure this is where the bombing was just here. I'm going to check, but I'm pretty sure that's where it was. I was right. Now, that was purely done off memory. It obviously scarred me as a child, thinking about what had happened and how terrible it was. I really, really vividly remember it in the news. It was in the 90s, not the 80s, I think. But I don't know. I don't know when. Now, I'm just going to try and get some photos up and I'll put them in for you here but I just want to check as well roughly where it was right so there's a tower there like a a sticky out a bit and it's the only way I've been able to work out roughly where it is where it happened and I know it's a bit like gruesome but I sort of want to pay my respects in the right place that's what it is and, and if you look back up you can see the town hall at the end and the point pointy tower bit there as well so I'm presuming this is the, the crossroads. There's a, there's a road that comes off to one side and it's this next little bit up. 
I think it was either 29 or 30 people that lost their lives and I wonder if this is it because I wonder if this is what this statue that's in front of me represents I don't know if that's what that represents uh, it might not do I think I think it is I think it's round about here but what a shame how awful is it though really why do people do this to each other it's so sad just thinking about what went off that day and there's a photo of a dad and a little girl and a little girl on his shoulders that happened it was taken just before the explosion and the car that exploded the car bomb is next to them in it it's just sickening it really really is so I was actually wrong. I was just up there and it was here that it happened. That's why there's a big heart and a memorial thing there. In fact, it probably tells you on here, look. In memory of the 29 men, women and children. Uh, and unborn twins, that's awful. 1998, so I was 18 when it happened. Yeah, and the reason I recognized it, I recognized that building there. And that's in the photo, I think, with the little girl and the dad. I'm sure it is. I've not looked, but I, I've, I seem to remember it being in there. So this is where it all happened. It's awful, absolutely awful what happened. It really, really is. We need to remember things like this and not let it happen again. Anyway, I'm still looking for food. I'm here. I'm choosing out what I want. It's very quiet in here because there's only me and one other couple. So... I can't be loud, I feel a bit weird talking to you, so that's why I've got a mic. Are you ready? I am, yeah, I am. Uh, can I get the King uh, King Prawn Puree? Pure? And what else did I want? Is it possible to get a King Prawn Jalfrese? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My, my medium or hot? Um, we'll go for, I normally have hot. But I'm sleeping in my car, so we'll go for medium. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, do you want pilar rice? Uh, pilar rice and a portion of chips. And a portion of chips. And two chapatis as well, two please. Chips. And two cans of coke. Okay. Do you want to make out a pint of coke? Um, yeah, you can do, yeah. And scratch? Yeah, spot on. That's no. Yes, yeah, so like I was saying, I feel really uncomfortable. But I'll show you my food, but I'm not talking to you for ages. Just quickly show you and then eat. Right, the starter's here. Like I said, I'm not going to be very loud. I'm just going to crack on and eat. I just wanted to show you. Oh God, I'm freezing. Right, so I've had my curry. It was amazing. It was so, so, so nice. I also had a really long conversation with the owner and the other people that were in there about what I'm doing. And it was so fun. So this building, that I was talking about earlier on, I was right. Look, it's the courthouse. So that's why it was all caged in. So people can't leg it. Anyway, back to the car and off and explore. Before bed, I need sleep so bad. Right, so I've been for my food. I'd walked back up through the town. And at this point, I got myself more and more worked up about this location that I was going to next. And for good, valid reasons, to be fair. I had been warned by so many explorers, so many people in that area and in the south of Ireland as well, not to go to this location because of who owned it and how ridiculously mental that it could be. And since I've come back from the explore, I have had some contact which i'm not going to go into because i don't want to cause myself any more bother but worrying stuff but i'm all right so don't worry i'm okay but it took me ages to work myself up for it and it's not like me that normally i'll just go oh i'm not bothered but i sat in the car for ages and while i was sat in the car all of a sudden there was a knock on my window and it scared me to death and it was a girl, and I'd been watching them while I was sat in the car because they were kept going up to every car and asking um, if they could get a lift. And they finally came to my car. 
and um, they wanted to lift 12 miles. And normally I would have been a bit like, oh, a bit, yeah. it's like 12 miles, 24 mile round trip. And I found out that one of them was on a flight the next morning to America and it was like a dream trip that they'd been looking forward to. So I thought, you know what, just get in. So they got in and it was so fun. They were laughing, they were joking and they were singing. I'm going to show you a bit of a clip that I filmed, which is very, very dark. And then another bit where we did a, a Facebook Live and it was just hilarious. It really was such good crack, such a good laugh. Um, I even got invited in the house. I didn't go in the house, but I got invited in the house, but then I went back, back to uh, where I'd come from before. That big old moon is shining down. Tell me now, don't it remind you? That gay on the ground. Remember We're back when I first loaned us. And we go slipping out of town. And we love beneath the moonlight. On the back and on the ground. In the tree, in the hole, in the hole, in the bog, in the bog, down in the valley, yo. Oh, oh, they're out in the bog, bog, down in the valley, yo. They're out in the bog, bog, down in the valley, yo. Yeah. Yoo-hoo. Yeah. They're a bird, they're out in the bird. Bird in the nest, in the nest, in the limb, in the limb, in the brush, in the brush, in the tree, in the tree, in the hole, in the hole, in the bog, in the bog, down in the valley, yo. Yeah. Yoo-hoo. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
cut my leg then. Look, see that? There, that box. I think it's some sort of alarm system. I think they're probably fitting it now, looking at this. They've not finished doing it. But look at this. This is amazing. <gasps> look at the floor. What does this mean? Virilitas. Right, so I've got out of the place in Omar. I haven't got caught by the lunatic. My lips are swelling up though. I don't know if you can see my bottom lips sticking right out. They're so sore. I'm really, really, I think I'm de dehydrated. My lips are chapped. I'm just a bit of a mess, really. So, I've decided to drive. It's, it's 3.25 in the morning. I was gonna drive straight to Belfast, but I'm gonna to go to Antrim instead. Have my breakfast in Antrim, head to Belfast, and then head to the airport, I think. Um, so, I will see you in the morning, probably, unless I, I say something in a bit, because I'm bored. Bye. Right, I'm really, really tired. It's five to five in the morning. Probably later than I wanted to be here. I'm extremely tired, my eyes are gone. Um, I wanted to park down next to the water, <coughs> but the gates are down, so I'm parking here. Not gonna look dodgy in the morning, park next to a kid's playground, am I? Right, half asleep. But it is what it is, I just, I'm gonna sleep now, I don't care. I literally do not care at this point, I'm just going straight to sleep. Good night, everybody. Right, so that's it for part two. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You know, I like doing these behind the scenes videos. I forget to do them. I forget to film them properly, but I do enjoy doing them because I think it gives you more of an insight of what it's like to be me. And it, it's not always easy work. Like on this one, I got into two places out of maybe five different places. So you see, it's it's not, it's not easy, it's hard, it's hard work sometimes, it's tiring. Getting, finishing at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, to only then get up again at eight. And I know people are going to say, don't burn out. I'm doing it so I can get them all done in one go and I don't have to go out every single week somewhere different. I can do it all in one go and then I can chill. So don't worry, I'm okay. Anyway, see you in part three. I don't know when I'm going to put it up. As soon as I've got it edited. See you in a bit. Morning on the final morning. I can't talk very well because my back of my throat is absolutely killing. I don't know if it's from sleeping with my mouth open or something. It's really hurting. I've just brushed my teeth and I needed to do it straight away because my mouth just felt awful. And then I'd been eating sweets. Nerds. And I forgot I'd eaten them. And I looked at my mouth and it was like all different colours. And I thought, oh my God, I've got lurg, I'm going to die. And it turns out that it's because I, I hadn't got some of these like on the way through. So I tongue, I've brushed my tongue, but it's still all different colours. <coughs> I've got toothpaste all over me. But yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm sounding a bit worse for wear. So I came and parked up in, I don't even know where I am, somewhere beginning with A. Where am I? I don't know. I can't remember. So I want to go and have, stretch my legs and have a walk down there, I think. The weather's not great. It's not, it's not wet or anything. It's just cold, I think. It was minus one when I landed here, landed when I parked up here last night. But I wasn't that cold this morning, it wasn't too bad. Anyway, I'm get out and show you. I sound awful, I sound so bad. I think I'll be all right once I get going. Once I've eaten something as well. Something's like coating the back of my throat. I don't know if I've got like a bit of a throat infection or something coming on. But either way, I'm gonna get out and have a look over there because I think there's water over there and I'll show you what it is in a minute. Right, so I'm up. I'm not feeling great this morning, to be fair. This is where we slept, like I said, next to a children's play area, which is fun. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick walk down, see what I can see down here. 
I need to find some breakfast. I need to get some tablets. I've got a banging headache. I'm feeling worse for wear today for the first time. I'm not feeling great. I, I am actually looking forward to going home today. Um, I think I just need to rest. It's five o'clock this morning, I went to sleep and I woke up about nine. So four hours sleep tonight. And what was it the night before? Five hours the night before and five hours the night before that. I'm run down. So yes, people will say, oh, you need to be looking after yourself. And it's, it's like a big blast of getting it all done in one go. And then I can rest as much as I want for the next few weeks. So yeah, I get it. I understand people say I need to look after myself and you're right, but it needs to be done this way. I think this is the best way for me to do it. But anyway, I'll show you where we are. Uh, it's a 15 minute walk to the castle, uh, to the castle and the town center, but I'm not walking. I'm gonna drive up. I just wanna have a look down here first because we're in the little bit that I think is quite iconic for Northern Ireland and I'll show you on a map in a minute what I mean. Right, so like I said, the car's there and the water's right here. We've got the Antrim Boat Club just here and then it opens right up. And if you look on the map, that's because we're in Antrim right next to the sort of, what I always think of as an eye. It looks like an eye on a dog or something. So yeah, we... We like literally right next to this water. So I'm gonna walk up there, have a quick look, see if I can maybe have a wee, because I'm desperate for a wee, and then and then head back and get some breakfast. Right, so we've got a big statuey thing there, the protector of the something it's called. I can't see the other side of it. Now Game of Thrones was partially filmed in the water here. Game of Thrones was actually filmed quite a lot up round Northern Ireland, loads and loads of it. And there's actually the abandoned film set um, for Castle Black. And I was thinking about going there, but I think from what I've heard, you need two people to get in. Like to, one to leg the other one up. So it's a bit of a worry. These guys behind me, I'll show you in a sec, their camera's massive. I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something interesting. But yeah, uh, apparently around the edges of this, um, in like the bits where it goes in, they were on little boats and stuff on Game of Thrones, which is quite good, but it's so lovely around here. Right, I'll pretend that I'm just sort of scanning around here, but all I'm actually gonna do is just zoom in on the camera, look. Look at that camera, that's a proper camera, that is. I wouldn't wanna be lugging that round abandoned buildings there, to be fair. But anyway, I'm gonna head off. It just looks like the sky turns in, into the water. It's all the same thing. There's a building over there, right in the distance, I've just noticed as well. I don't know what that is. So, but yeah, I need some breakfast. I need some tablets. Like I said, I'm feeling a bit ropey. So we'll get out of here and go and get some food. I swear that's all you see me do, eating, driving. <laughs> and that's about it. But this is what, this is the life of a YouTuber out on the road doing filming. It's just, it just happens like that, I'm afraid. It'd be nice if there'd been like a restaurant or cafe type place down here. Um, Cause I could have just chilled out down here and had something to eat, but it's what it is. Right, I'm off. I need a wee though, that's the problem. But there isn't anywhere to go. Let's see what I can find up here. Right, so, so there was a little hole in the fence. So I just sneaked onto the golf course and had a wee next to the 15th hole. So <laughs> that was the best way to do it. Cause I didn't want to get I didn't want to get seen by loads of hikers and walkers. I thought that was the only way to do it. Right, back to the car, go get some food. I'm feeling a bit better now. I don't know whether it was just that initial waking up, but I am full of cold. And I think I might've got a throat infection or something coming on, I don't know. But either way, I'm not dead, I'm all good. So we'll go and get in the car. Right, I can't talk long because I'll get copyright strike because of that, but breakfast time. Definitely needed potato scones as well. Can't beat potato scones. Coffee, can of coke. There we go. Don't want to get get, get copyright striped over this though. So anyway, see you after food. That was an amazing breakfast, and I don't think you understand how good it was. There was potato scones. 
there was pancakes underneath the potato scones. It just, it was just good, really good. The bacon was underneath stuff as well. If anybody's saying there was no bacon, there definitely was. So I'm heading back out of here now, back to the car. And then I am off to Belfast. And then I've got to get down to Dublin this afternoon. So it's a bit of a rush to be fair. Um, got quite a lot that needs to be done. I could do, there's two more explorers I could do, but I don't think I'm gonna have time. And the end of the day, I've got to be, I've got to be careful. Right, I'm going to get a drink. Oh no, I'm not, because there's a queue as long as God knows what. So, oh, just, oh dear. I hope I'm not supposed to have paid in that car park. There's a, there's a parking guy there. I didn't even check. Bleeding egg. And I'm not even supposed to bring my car to Belfast. So if I get a parking ticket here, not only will I get the charge for the parking ticket, I'll get the charge for bringing it in to Northern Ireland, which is an extra hundred euros. So, naughty boy. Anyway, let's crack on, get to the car. I wanna find a homeless person and give them my blanket because I can't take it back on the plane with me. So someone may as well get use out of it. So if I do see anyone, I wanna pass it on to them. I don't feel like I've seen anything of Antrim really, which is a shame, but it's all about time at the moment. I've got to get on that flight. Uh, my flight's at eight o'clock tonight. And uh, God, it's going to take me three hours to get out of this car park. I can't actually find, oh, there's a really good gate and stuff down there. Oh, you can't see it. There's a bit of castle wall or something. And then oh, it just looks like a big wall, but there's a big massive gate thing behind there that looks really good. See, I'd like to stay and look, but at the moment, it's just a case of getting to Belfast as quick as I can actually having some time for myself to go and have a look in Belfast and show you guys and then getting on the plane um, later on. I wanted to do one more explore really but it's not going to happen. How the hell did I get in this place? I can't even find my way out at all. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what this place is but it's just a random peacock sat on that wall. I know there's a big hall behind there because I've just seen it on the maps. Well, God knows. Anyway, I've just had to go and get some fuel. And now I'm back onto the motorway in a second to get off to Belfast. God, I'd love to know what that place is over there. Oh, God. I'm struggling here a bit. Look at that. That's abandoned. I have no idea what that is. The church next to it looks a bit of a scraggy mess as well. So maybe that is... I don't know what that place is. I haven't got time though. I really haven't got time. Maybe it's, I've got to come back here. I'm not sure. I've actually only done one location in Northern Ireland. So maybe it's worth coming back. I need to get in the other lane though. I'm in the wrong lane. But yeah, maybe it's worth coming back to Northern Ireland on its own rather than with Republic of Ireland and doing a bit more here it seems like there's some good stuff knocking about my lips look at Staterham proper mess right we've just pulled up somewhere it's a bit controversial a bit of a a strange place because there's been a lot of trouble here this is the Shank Hill Road is it a Shank Hill Road? I want to say Shank Hill Road just a minute Shanklin Road I always get mixed up with Shank Hill because that's in Scotland but no Shanklin Road this is where a lot of trouble has kicked off in the past. There's a lot of murals, and I just wanted to show you them. I would like to share what it's like round here. Um, it's not a true reflection of Belfast city centre, but it is showing that there is still, I wouldn't say tensions, but there is still big allegiances to the Protestant Catholic Church. People don't forget things that have happened in the past. I'm gonna take this hoodie off because it's got that logo on the back that possibly could wind people up. But I just wanted to show you some of the amazing artwork that people have done as well. And I love the fact that they put in the time and effort into the artwork rather than like killing each other. So anyway, let's go and have a look. I'm just gonna go a bit further up. Yeah, this is why I'm taking this hoodie off. Not probably the best idea to be wearing this round here. Definitely not the best, best idea. So I'm gonna cover that up and hide it out of the way, I think. Now I don't know everything about everything around here at all. I know little bits and I'm learning just as much 
as hopefully we will learn together but I think this is the Protestant area rather than Catholic I'm not 100% sure though um, there's a Union Jack over there which makes me think it is but look at this first piece of artwork some of them I know what they're there for some of them I don't look at that out there that's absolutely stunning work that is must have taken absolutely ages to do but yeah, like I said, just over there is a Union Jack, which makes me think we're in a Protestant area, but we'll work it out. Now, I've just had a quick look, and it is the Loyalists mainly that live around this area. And there's still massive, massive influence around here. To say that it's supposed to be over and done with, it's certainly not. Now, I do remember seeing stuff about the UDA Ulster Young Militants it, It's a bit scary, I'm not going to lie Yeah, look Welcome to the Loyalist Lower Shankill It's just a bit worrying There's some more, some more stuff up here We'll go and have a look at that Now, it is quite peaceful at the moment But there is always going to be something Underlying In Belfast Now, I feel quite alright Round here, because Technically, if you're looking at it, I'm a, I sit on the ranger side of things. I've got tattoos on my arms that will, if anything happens, I can just pull them out and I'm all right. Um, but yeah, I'm a loyalist, but I'm not into any sort of trouble and things anyway. Right, I'll show you up here. Why is there a massive gorilla in someone's garden? That's a bit weird. But yeah, look. A to Z history of the Shankill Road. It's got all the different people. And it used to be, I know that they do the marches up in Scotland as well, the Orange Order and things like that. But yeah, there's loads of stuff on there. There's one further up here that I really want to see, so I'm going to go up to that. Now, I haven't got time to go, this is part of this that we were just looking at a second ago. I haven't got time to go through it all. But look, it's on about the Orange Order um, and all the other stuff. If you want to research this yourself, you can. It's it's quite scary, some of the stuff that's gone off over the years. It really, really is. Now, I know I'm okay with the tattoos on the arm, purely because <laughs> this was me back in the day when I was a young teenager. Well, a late teenager, probably 17, 18. I was chatting up a lass up in Scotland. Um, I was on holiday and I'd, we'd been, I'd been buying a drink and we were having a laugh and stuff like that. Anyway, all of a sudden, this guy grabs me round the throat and he said, you English bastard, you don't talk to my daughter, which was quite scary, but I whipped out the tattoos and he ended up buying me drinks for the rest of the night. He was apologizing to me and all this. It was, but it was, I was scared. And I've always wanted to come here just to sort of look. I, it's not, I don't wanna, like, I'm not a political person. I'm definitely not a violent person, but it is good to see stuff like this just because you don't see it in the UK or the mainland UK. Anyway, we'll keep looking. Now, I've read about this one before. Um, William McCullough, he was gunned down whilst taking his children to school one day. I don't know all the story to it. Um, obviously, he was a loyalist. And I think he lived either in that house or somewhere. It's Denmark Street, and I know this is Denmark Community Centre. So I think it was possibly on this street he was gunned down. And obviously they've put that there as a bit of a memorial. And the guy that then shot him got killed about seven years later. He was gunned down as well. It's just all senseless, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. And look, there's all names down there as well, which I'm guessing are people that ended up dying and going in the same way as him. But such a senseless loss of life, it really is. I just want to show you this, even the floor is red, white, and blue. There's so many 
Union Jack flags. Now, I typically, I can't see any at the moment, but they're all over Rangers flags. Um, red, white, and blue pretty much everywhere. And it's the thing is, I'll just go around this corner and I'll show you. There's another one here up on that wall. Like, even though it's a constant reminder, in a almost like a positive way, because it's reminding all the terrible things that have happened and hopefully they won't happen again. It also is a constant reminder to the youth, to the new generation of what's gone on. And you know what young spirited kids are like? You just don't know what's gonna happen with the next, in 10 years time, 20 years time. It's, it's scary, it really is. But yeah, look, these are the sorts of things we used to see on the news back in the day. Back in the 80s and 90s. Oh, there's another big one over there. Let's go and look at that. Now, what I have noticed is there's loads of big abandoned buildings. These are up here as well. You could tell they are from the distance. This one's got windows missing and all fencing around it. But there's absolutely no way on this earth I would explore anything around here. And like I said, technically, I'm not don't want to say I'm on their side because I'm not on anybody's side I'm not like that but technically if I was to lay on one or the other because of being a royalist a loyalist um, this would be sort of the area I would be in but still I ain't going anywhere near that place I'm telling you now right so this is a bit of a memorial to Stevie McRae now this guy was in one of the worst prisons around here. They can see, you can see pictures of it along the bottom. He went to prison for quite a long time. I think he got life, but then ended up getting out. But he was a proper escape artist, apparently. Um, he got, there was an X-ray van. All the, all the people in there had to have the chest X-rayed. And um, he climbed under the van and stayed there for two days, um, but then got caught again. Then he got released. And a few years later, he was in a pub with his friends and um, all of a sudden, because the pubs used to have like buzzers on them and you have to buzz your way in. And these guys buzzed the way in, pretended that it was a robbery. So all the men lined up at the bar and then they tried to execute the lot of them, but he jumped in front and he was killed, but he saved all his friends by doing so. Um, also got Summer of 69. I don't really know anything about this one. I'm presuming it's, talking about how bad it was back in 1969 but yeah it looks quite bleak but they're amazing these like it tells you all about it there but I sort of knew a bit about this because I'm sure it's something like Long Kesh prison he was in something like that it was really 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 bad this obviously stayed in these here but that's that building I was on about hey wait up there's people I think supposed to be doing that or if they work us or what but they're hammering at something over there god knows not sure but yeah that's that big building i was on about i have no idea what it is it looks very very grand but there's nothing inside it. it's all empty and all burnt out oh my god so this building behind me that i've said there's absolutely no way on earth i'm going in i was due to go in there this week I know what it is now because there is the prison and that's still a, a working prison this is the old courthouse and underneath the courthouse there is um jail cells and things like that you can still go in the rest of the building is totally totally burnt out but i did know about this place i knew all about it but i didn't realize where it was in comparison to everything jeez but I'll, I'll quickly go up and show you now, Mia. Now, like I was saying, it's still a working building. It's not as a jail itself, but it used to be. You can see all the cells all the way up there, look. But it's like a jail experience now. So you can pay to go in and have a bit of a tour. I'm tempted to do it, you know. I'm tempted to go and have a look. The only problem is I ain't got very much battery life on this, or I might, I might do. Friends, I'm gonna have a look and see how much it is. I'm tight, don't forget. So, but this is the place that we were supposed to be going in. But I decided against it because I was running out of time. But yeah, look. Look at this place. Yeah, the reason I didn't go in as well 
is because it's it's brilliant but it's burnt like literally every room upstairs is gone it's just the cells underneath however there is a tunnel that runs right under this road from the courthouse straight into the jail so you can actually get halfway across apparently it's all blocked up but you used to be able to go all the way over but just think who's been through these gates think who's seen the day in court in here some very scary people anyway i'm gonna pop in there and have a quick look i don't think i don't get your hopes up because i don't think i'm gonna go in but i've got very little time as well that's the problem right so just been having a look you've actually got to pre-book your tickets 24 hours before anyway so it's not looking like i can go in regardless however like i said quite an imposing place really imagine being locked up in there for many many years not with him there i don't think he'd be there but look get a bit of a better view of the whole building here as well crazy i wonder if that goes down i always think when you see things like this is there a link to that tunnel somehow underneath i'd like to know where it runs have you seen all the pumpkins up there as well They've obviously got some sort of Halloween event going on, but how many pumpkins do you need? Look at all those. Right, so those two guys that were doing something have put these two bolts in. I'm guessing this gate had come open and people had been getting in up through that gap. But if he knows explorers, if they know explorers, you can get in anyway. Like, easiest way in possible there, look. You just stand on that, stand on that, Stand on that and over. I, it's not going to stop you. Even the razor wire. Uh, it looks like there's been a fair few people got stuck on that razor wire. But, God, it looks like 1980s clothes as well. But yeah, uh, that, is, that is one of the easiest ways to get in ever. They need to be sorting out, putting some extra stuff up over the top of there. That would stop people. Putting those two bolts on there is useless. Uh, if you really want to get in somewhere enough, you can. Like it only takes, just bring a ladder, foldable ladder. Certain time of night, jump over there, pull it up over, sorted. All right, so I get that they've got to secure these places for safety, but it's a, it's a losing battle for them. I really think it is. Now, I am literally just wandering around the streets. I don't know where these murals are. I'm just finding them bit by bit. There's a one, there's a Bobby Sands one that I'd quite like to find because it's quite iconic. I don't think I will. I don't want to spend too long here, but I do want to go and see the Catholic ones as well, which is a bit scary. If I find that quite scary. Um, English accent with royalist flags on my arm. It's, it's a bit worrying. Like I said, there's no real bother these days. It's not as bad as it was, but there is still elements there. But anyway, we'll keep looking up here See if I can find a couple more and then we'll head off and go and have a look for the uh, the Catholic ones. Now we're heading up, we're in the Catholic area at the moment. Um, as I've been driving along there's been all sorts of stuff down the sides which I will take you back and show you but there's flags and everything. Now, see a lot of the people that live here will tell me there's no problems, there's no bother. The thing is, it, from the outside and seeing it all through the 80s and 90s as I was growing up I am genuinely scared of being around here it's it's a bit strange for me because I think of it as a negative thing and, and I know they're trying to get away from that now they're trying to stop thinking about all the stuff that happened and the violence and that's good that is a brilliant thing however it will always live in my memory from seeing it constantly on the news seeing all the stuff going off over here and then back in england as well it, it's scary right so we're up next to probably the most famous mural in the whole of belfast and i wanted to show you this that's of bobby sands now if you don't know who bobby sands is he was an ira member um and he planned a bombing um and then got caught with a gun and he got 14 years in prison. 
and he put him in the prison that we've just been to a minute ago originally and then he went to May's prison which is not too far away I look like I've got lipstick on because my lips are that sore anyway um, he went on a hunger strike and basically he protested and said that he shouldn't be wearing uniform prison uniform he should have more freedom to be able to speak to um, friends and family and receive parcels and packages from them and things like that so as a result he stopped eating he wouldn't wear any clothes so he was naked for like 22 days straight he didn't eat um, he went on a dirty strike which is basically I mean a dirty protest which is basically where he's had a poo and wiped it on the walls um, and basically protested to Margaret Thatcher and said that um, things needed to change he needs to be treated better than this and Margaret Thatcher turned around and said absolutely not you're a terrorist you've committed crimes and that's down to you so I'll show it you it's absolutely amazing to be fair now it doesn't matter what your beliefs are on it because actually this was a, the reason loads more IRA members signed up because of Bobby Sands because of his him being a martyr basically which meant that all the young people of the area were up in arms um, and basically up in arms they, they went and got guns and it started a load more violence and a load more trouble um, because of his death and nine other people that died as a result of the hunger strikes and he led that so it is really interesting it's really sad I am not going to take sides with it obviously no, no deaths it doesn't matter which side it is he was a, an awful person for planning bombings and things like that, absolutely terrible. However, on the other side of things, you don't know what it's like to live in that in that sort of time and what was going off. So I don't want to make judgment on anything. At the end of the day, the, the actions that he made were awful, but also so were lots of other people's as well. So it's good to see the, the history and see that people still think about these things and talk about these things as long as it's not still happening today that's the main thing now like I was saying to you the other day if it's very easy to look at these situations and think you know what this is terrible blah 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 but then if you think about it in a different way these people were fighting for their land for their where that had been invaded it's only like the Ukrainians are doing now in regards to fighting back against Russia. So we are, we do have double standards. However, none of it's right. There should be no fighting, there should be no violence, there should be nothing at all. It shouldn't happen in the first place. People shouldn't go and take over other lands and then expect everything to be just fine. It, it's terrible, it just needs not to happen. I need to stop being so political anyway. I'm just, I'm just talking through what my experience of it is. There's another thing here I've not seen before. Yeah, there's another bit on the wall there for freedom. Now we're gonna head back down. The car's just down there. We're gonna head back down. There is a load more down here. And then we possibly, if I've got time, we'll go into the center of Belfast. Right, these are the last ones I'm gonna show you. It, this has been absolutely nothing political. I have got no stance on any of this. The only thing is, I just wanted to show you that how much it's still a part of people's lives over here and just generally as a point of interest like just to to see it because i've seen this growing up when i've been at school sort of in the 90s at school seeing it on the news connected with people dying and one thing and another it's so strange to actually see it like with my own eyes and like I said, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. At the end of the day, it is just all wrong because innocent people have died and it, it's so sad. It really is so sad. So anyway, I'm going to show you these last few on here and then we'll head back up to the car and go somewhere else. The thing is, there's so many. I'm not going to talk through any of them 
just going to show you as we walk down here. I'm not going around the corner either because there's even more around there. But I just thought they are the they're an amazing part of history, and I know they're a horrible part of history, but they are an amazing part of history that needs to be remembered, but remembered for the right reasons to stop it happening again, to stop stuff continuing over here. And I don't know, this one's interesting. This is the only one I am gonna talk about. This one here, the burning of Long Cash. So when I said that he was kept in Long Cash previously, um, the guy we were talking about earlier on, um, I'm guessing it got burnt down and I never knew that. British government authorised and sanctioned the use of chemical weapons against Irish and Republican prisoners. See, I don't know enough enough of this history, but it's something I'll probably look into now. But once again, like I said, it's really sad. I think this is the final one. All the, um, the people that have died over the years doing certain certain things i think he was part of the hunger strike i'm not 100 percent sure but anyway let's get back to the car right so i'm in belfast city center i don't really know whereabouts i have no clue and actually i haven't even worked out i don't even know where my car is I, oh i've got my apple tag I could find my car, the car because of the apple tag. I've just wandered about for 10 minutes. I'm probably not about to find my way back, but the apple tag is always a good thing for that. I definitely think Northern Ireland is somewhere I want to come back. I was a bit, a bit scared of the place, if I'm being honest, in the first place, but I really liked it. I think it's a really nice place. The whole of Ireland is amazing. Definitely would recommend definitely would recommend so the places i've been to recently cornwall devon scotland northern ireland southern ireland go to them all really really nice and if they shit i'll tell you the shit don't go to romania hated it awful place but that might be because i had covid but i don't know but yeah if you get the opportunity come right i've popped for a pint of guinness before i go i should have had it in dublin really but i haven't unless i get a chance nice little bar this as well little pub. so i'm gonna have this and i'm gonna get off it's so good it really really has been so so good anyway i'll catch up with you probably at the airport now i'm in a bit of a rush now but i remembered something I've got that blanket that I can't take back on the plane. I've just seen a homeless guy down here who looked freezing. He didn't look happy at all. So I've decided I'm going to go back to the car, go and get the blanket and then drop it off, give it to him. But then I've got to rush. Um, not so much for the for the plane, plane's ages. It's for the car hire. I've got to get the car back in time. Otherwise I want to get charged extra. Jesus, I'm going to be cutting it fine. Oh dear, all the mess in this car. Right, oh look, find his beeper's flag. That's been all over the world, that has. It's here, look, right. Let me get this out, fold it up, all nice for him. And then hurry up and go and take it to him because I've got to think about it like this, right? Yeah, it's a bit of uncomfort for me running around for five minutes. But if it's a bit of comfort for him overnight, when he's sleeping in the freezing cold weather, I would much rather do that. You've got to think about it like this. I've been waking up freezing in the morning and I've been in the car with this on. So what it's like for somebody that's just out on the street, I just don't, I don't know how they do it. I really don't. So like 10 minutes of my time, something I can't even take back to the UK with me anyway, because I've got no room in my bag for it. Why not? So that's my good deed done for the day. Yesterday it was saving women from not being able to get back to their house today. It's looking after homeless people. I am like a modern day here. I'm only joking. You should, everybody should do things like this. If you can, if you're in a position to do it, like we are very lucky, everybody 
has problems at certain times in her life and it's always really nice to try and help out if you can. Anyway, it's a last goodbye to Belfast. Hopefully, not forever. And uh, I'll see you at the airport. Right, that's me back at the airport. Car dropped off, all sorted out. Flying home back to Liverpool. And I might go and do a cheeky explore in Blackburn. I don't know yet. Either that or go to sleep. Oh God, I'm so tired. So I don't know whether I'm gonna or not, we'll see. But I will see you soon. I really, really hope you've enjoyed the island trip. The locations have been brilliant. I was worried that it was all gonna go a little bit tits up, but it came came together in the end and I'm really, really pleased with how it is. So I love you all and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Tell me where you want me to go next as well.